And well, you all know him, and he is the writer, producer, director, and one of the stars of this movie, Horizon. Please welcome Kevin Costner. Welcome, welcome, Kevin and everybody, um, two contenders, and um, Kevin, this is a long-time dream of yours, this, this project, this movie. I, I think it started in your head in the late 80s? Yeah, 1988. Uh, 1988. Wow, 1988. <laughs> long time. Sometimes it takes a long time to get a movie made, I guess. So. I can do anything I want in town, and maybe that's true on one level, that I can do anything they would like me to do. It's, but sometimes the things you want to do take time, and um, I, I just don't fall out of love. And when I feel like I have a secret that I want to bring to cinema, I just, I chase it. It's my own private UFO. I just, I've seen it, and I will never forget it, and I chase it as long as I can. And, and the fact that it's, I've been able to make two of them, um, I think I'd be satisfied with my life um, if this was all I got to do. Oh, this, as you know, is an American saga in four parts, and so far we have, I have seen uh, the second part as well, which is incredible, by the way. It just really moves the story along and just makes you wait for the third part. We're going to talk about that, but we're going to take a look at a scene right now from the film. So <laughs> That's the word you use, but in the reality is it, we all know what a bully is. We've all been bullied. We've all been around somebody that's not gonna let something go. And I will tell you, I was anything but cool as a character. The idea, he was frightening kind of personality. And if you've seen the movie, you realize he's just come from a bloodlust. So he, he's a little revved up. But you know, you get to play characters, movies that are braver than I am. I play characters that are smarter than I am. But in truth, when I'm playing that, I'm a little nervous about who he is. And um, I'll get us to the gunfight, but I'm, I've always loved the walk. What takes you to that gunfight? And um, that's kind of what we've tried to do during the course of Horizon is, is let some of these moments really breathe. We'll get to the gunfight, but uh, I'm glad that the, that scene stands out. And yeah. It's, um, it's also, I use the word when we were talking backstage, classic I, in, in terms of the cinematography, the score, all of it. it. It feels like the classic Western. You are no stranger to Westerns, obviously. But um, this one, what separates it for you from all the ones you've done before? Because this harkens back to kind of a, a classic kind yeah. of a... It, what separates it for me is that there's, we almost have kind of a national amnesia about the, the trip, the, the great migration that took 200 years, almost 250 years. We went by inches and, and um, the thing that's missing in, in most Westerns, because I don't like all Westerns, I, I, I disregard most of them that I grew up with, but occasionally when they find a level of authentic, authenticity, both in how people are dressed, how they're shot, how they live, uh, what they're saying, they're haunting to me uh, because it's not a land in Disneyland. It really, it really happened out there. And um, what was your question? <laughs> it's just how is this different from all the many Westerns well, you've done? I can name them no, off I, the top of my head. I think I could. <laughs> but how it, how it is different, I know where I was going with that long thing and then I lose myself, um, which is all these Westerns always start with a town. But in Horizon, we start with the beginning because every town that we know of, when you fly over this country, Native Americans were there first. They lived in the good places. Where you could cross the rivers, where you could go. There was some equilibrium that had happened before we came. And so I thought, why don't we talk about the struggle of a town that just emerges? And it doesn't just emerge like a mushroom. In Horizon, it's burnt, it's, it's, it's built up, it's burnt, it's built up. 
And then finally, there's the great tipping point in all Westerns, which we know, because it never ended well for the Native Americans. There's a tipping point of sheer numbers. And finally, the town of Horizon bumps over the edge, and life will never be the same. It will be what we know it to be, and um, the loss that's there. And I guess that's why it takes me four movies. <laughs> now, you can't make a movie, even though you're a writer, director, producer, star, financer, everything you do to make a movie uh, here without a group of great artisans. And you've worked with Jimmy Murrow here, who's your cinematographer. I think you might have met him on Field of Dreams when you were, is that right, Jimmy? Tell me your relationship here with Kevin. Yep, I met the boss on Field of Dreams. Uh, I did steady cam on that one. He told me the story of Dances with Wolves uh, while we were making that film. Uh, I did the shot going around Kevin, uh, ease his pain. And um, anyway, so he's a storyteller. He told me what he's gonna do with dances. Um, I went and that was like a long, beautiful summer vacation for me. I met my wife there. And um, I worked uh, and it was just incredible. And from there he made me a cameraman. I, I shot, it, by the way, there he was on JFK. I was working for Oliver Stone. <clears throat> so you come by each other in, in life and, and there he is and every now and then uh, Kevin's back in my life. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting for the call. And I was just like, is he gonna call me to go fishing or is he gonna? <laughs> do something. I, I think, can I say something about Jimmy for a second? Every DP would like to, I didn't know there were so many people here. <laughs> um, took off your glasses. Every DP would love to, I was, I was looking close, would like to do a Western, would like to make a movie outdoors. And when they get a chance, oh my God, what I will do with that when I get that chance. So Jimmy Murrow, had that chance, but I cut it in half for him. I shot Dancers with Wolves in 106 days. We shot Horizon, which is uh, arguably longer, in 52. So what did that mean for Jimmy? It meant he wasn't gonna be able to wait for the most perfect light. He didn't have anything, every tool at his, at his beck and call because we're an independent movie. What he did in 52 days was he lost his ego and he did what I asked him to do, which is let's, we have a script, it's our Bible, shoot it for me. And he sacrificed the idea of like, my God, most of my colleagues would be waiting for the magic light, for the this, for the that. And he didn't, he's a filmmaker and he served the story. And I am indebted to you for working at that pace, knowing what he sacrificed. But if you watch Horizon, you will see how beautifully he mounted it and understand that he never had a second. Thank you, boss. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautifully shot movie. And number two, chapter two, is like it takes it even to another level, Jimmy. And right next to you, the costume designer had big challenges here because you're working with all kinds of different elements here. The women, and this movie also has a huge cast of great women characters, which is uh, not always in Westerns. Uh, the military uniforms, uh, the male characters, uh, 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 all of that, the Native Americans. What was your biggest challenge here, Lisa, in, in doing this movie? Putting together a team of primarily craftspeople from Los Angeles, amazing union workers who have brought their skills from so many years. This movie was all shot in America, and so we were able to incorporate all of this history of um, skill. And I think the only reason I was able to get through each day is because of the leadership of Kevin being organized and having a team of actors who were there for us and having a team back at the shop who made everything and created this world. And I think all, of, all, all together, I think it was my team in the shop and my team here, including Jimmy, that made it so enjoyable.
I, I saw some of the jackets that you make, like a jacket or Kevin's character and things. They say, oh, they've got a jacket, they pulled it off the rack, it looks old and stuff. No, it took like forever to get it. You like all the stitches, everything inside. It is 100% authentic in the way you've done that, right? Yeah, we, we tried to make everything for principals, including all of our uh, Native Americans. We tried to make all the jewelry by um, very talented American um, Indian craftspeople. We used a lot of um, fabrics from Europe, fabrics from India and Thailand, just to get the real cotton or the real wool textures. I think, I think what's unusual about uh, this setting is that often we're not around people who are looking at our movies as closely as this room does. And this film was made with that in mind, not for awards, but it was made with the idea that there are people that look closely. And to see that they can cut out the noise when they choose to look at films. What does this film stand for? And I think what was unique is I think a lot of people think they can just do a Western right out of their garage. <laughs> Hell, we get some Levi's, we get some things. We get that. <laughs> it's not that. But what happens is, what happens here is a woman who's made her life in movies and has brought every bit of skill that she's learned, stood on the shoulders of costumers before her, and now Lisa brought to this movie. So good. And that's... Well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping, I'm dreaming, I'm meeting all the billionaires that we all hear about. <laughs> They're all hiding in the shadows. I don't care about them. I care about... I care about this moment that we've all taken throughout our lives when it goes dark and the curtain when we still had them opens. And um, so I'm gonna make three. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna make it and then I'm gonna make the fourth one. And, um, and if you wanna say the end at that point, then that's the end. I, it's, a, it's a rock I push. I have felt really um, uh, blessed to have found this business. I thank God that I have. And I've been on my yellow brick road for a while, and it's not over, and I, I will figure out a way to bring you three and four, because you've gone to one. 